Hey, Stampers, Diane Divich here with DDStamps.com. I am really thankful that I'm on tonight. I actually had some issues this afternoon. I was trying to get things up and going and found out my cameras weren't working and I didn't know what was going on. But anyway, it is all working now. And I, it just gave me a little scare for a second there, but I did pop on. So hopefully everybody can hear me and see me. If you are out there, I did start uh, maybe a minute early, but we'll just give it a few minutes to, for people to jump on. If you are out there on Facebook, go down in the comments and say hello or on YouTube. You can do it in the chat box um, on YouTube or on my website. And I am going to be able tonight, hopefully, to keep track of all that and uh, make sure that I answer everybody's questions because that's kind of the biggest thing for tonight. I have demonstrations, don't get me wrong. I chuckle when I see my table. Can you tell that I'm trying to get everything ready for the new catalog to go out. So if you have ordered for me in the last year, I did have Stampin' Up! send catalogs out for me this year, and they are supposed to go out sometime starting this week. So watch your mailbox for that. And then I actually am putting together a little packet of oh some stuff. And I'm going to show some of the stuff that I'm going to give you. That's coming in the mail. So that's just a reminder that um, your catalog is coming. So it's a great one, and there's a lot of fun stuff in it. I'm going to show tonight the Eastern Palace. Um, sweet because it's a lot of fun and actually it's available this month for those of you who are interested so it looks like I'm if, if you can hear and see me let me know oh yep 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 looks like lots of people can hear and see me on YouTube and I'm just gonna assume that you guys can hear me on yay yes you can hear and see me on Facebook hi Cindy and good Tanya everybody oh good everybody's seeing me and hear me so that's awesome um we are going to get started because I have a lot to show tonight and with my mess that I have back there, I hope I can get to everything. Um, let me pull up my screens because I just want to do a couple of quick reminders. So just so you're aware, um, a couple of, couple of things to talk about. If down here in this little corner where this little gear is, if you're having a, your cell, your cell phone, if you're, tape is like lagging or jumpy that little gear down there you can click on that and you can slow down or speed up the download upload speed and that would help with that um jumpiness or lagging so just check that out that little gear the higher the number the better the the clearer the picture is and then down in this bottom part here we have the auto refresh comments if you are in the process of typing in a comment and it automatically refreshes every 90 seconds and it's not when it's it, it can just randomly happen um, anything that you're typing in will be gone which is very depressing so if you want to just go ahead and unclick that then you can type in your comments and you can always click the buttons over here to refresh at any time so that you can stay up with what's going on in the chat box you don't necessarily have to most of the chat box is for me to stay up with what's going on but um, that's just one way for you to do it. So if you just unclick that little box, then you won't have any issues. If anybody has any questions tonight, please feel free to ask. That's why I'm here. I love to answer your questions. I think this is a great opportunity. Number one, because I'm here. And if it's a question about something that I have to pull off my shelf or whatever, I have it, and that's great. Um, good. So it looks like everybody can see and hear me. Doesn't look like anybody has any major questions yet, but people are coming in from all over. That's awesome. Okay, so I did get a couple, or I got a couple questions. This was one of them. Is there a secret or does it just take special expertise to not get ink on the corners of my clear blocks when inking stamps up? That was a question from Jana this afternoon, and I will be over there. I'm going to give a couple pointers to everybody um, on that question, just because it's probably a question that everybody has. At some point, we always get ink on our, the corners. So I'll just give you a couple of tips on that, and hopefully that will help that problem, Jana. And, and of course, it will probably help somebody else, too. So that's always nice. I had another question on there, and that was about cleaning stamps. And um, I'm going to actually show that over there, what I do what I have to clean with. So I'm going to go ahead and as long as I don't see, I better check one more time. Oh, I didn't check my website. So just remember that I'm, I'm actually <laughs> keeping track of three places. So I'm on YouTube, Facebook, and my, and my website. And so if I'm like looking down at my phone a lot, it's not that I'm trying to um, look at my phone and see who's texting me, but I, I'm trying to answer questions and this is where I get my email. 
So that's my, my website. Oh, somebody asked, Janice asked, can the stylish stem flowers be cut out with the flower part and the outline part at the same time? It doesn't look like it can be. You know, I found it was better for the stylish stems to, to run it through the big shot twice. Once to cut it out and then once to cut out the outside part. Um, you probably could if you taped it down with washi tape. But the problem is, is if you just overlap that framelit, just cut it out and then wants to oh. cut off the outside part. Um, you probably could. Where do you think that happened at? You guys still hear me? Okay, that was uh, awful strange. Oh, I found it. Never mind. Now I know why. So, um... Perfect. So as long as nobody else has any questions, we're going to just keep plugging away here. So this, what I was saying was if you overlap them just a tiny bit, sometimes you'll wreck that framelit. So you want to be very careful when you do that and make sure that you don't. Um, good. People can still hear me. Yeah, what happened is I think I have an extra screen open and um, it kicked in. So I was listening to the, I was listening to my broadcast. <laughs> okay. So these are the new ink colors for uh, the coming two, next two years, I love them. I didn't know if I would love them um, when I kind of heard about them, but when they're together and they're into the designer series paper and then you see how awesome they are. So I just wanted to show really quickly um, some of the stuff. So these are, can you see how the ribbons coordinate with the paper? It, I mean, the colors, it's amazing to me how they coordinate. And then we have these adorable little bow. They're like felt with a little piece of ribbon in, in the inside there. To hold it together and then a little tiny cute dimensional on the back to attach it to something but I was shocked this is the first time I took them out tonight and I noticed how how well look at the color how they coordinate with that cardstock so we've got the ribbon the bows the cardstock and then the ink colors are here these are actually bookmarks that I made for everybody that are going out this um, hopefully by Friday is my goal to get these packages out to you and so that you'll have them next week when your catalog arrives but you can see the, the various colors of the five the five new ink colors. So I think you're going to like them. Um, I think they're awesome. And I love these embellishments. Oh, I want to show you these two little embellishments too because these are tassels that are in the kit that I'm using tonight. But look at the tassel, how it coordinates with that green. The color coordination this time around, that can't be easy to get those dyes colors to, to look good together. Okay, so let me move some stuff out of the way. First off, we're going to start with what I use to clean my inks with. That was somebody's question. And then here's our stamp and scrub. And you'll see that this is an old one because it actually has a white interior. Our insides of our stamp and scrubs used to be white. I've kept mine forever. Um, and I just clean it. I will put this into like a sink full of cleaner and really get it a good clean. Sometimes I used to put them in my dra in my washing machine, or my, not my washing machine, but my uh, dishwasher. But the heat set was too high, and so it melted them. So I don't do that anymore. Now I just put them into a sink of soapy water, kind of scrub them up a bit, rinse them out, and then let them drain in the in the sink. And then I always use the stamp and mist because it cleans and conditions my stamps when I'm using my stamp and scrub. So one side is wet, one side is dry, um, and it's quick, easy way to clean them. But the other thing that I found lately that I use a lot more is this called the absorber. And you can see that I've used this a lot and it does stain. But this is like, I got this at my husband's store. So we have an auto parts store. So this is like a cloth that you would wash your car with and it's huge. I mean, we're talking it's huge. And it's called the absorber. You can find them anywhere, they're all over. I cut them up into like six pieces and this is what I use with washi tape. tape. But the problem is, is if you just overlap that, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, you probably could. Where do you think that happened at? Sorry. Can you guys still hear me? That is. Oh, there it is. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm hoping I have it done now. I think I have too many things up on my computer. Anyway, this is the absorber, and I just use it, and as you can see, it, it stains it, but it sure cleans them well. And what I love is that it just soaks up the ink, and it doesn't get any fibers or anything onto your stamps, and it's really good for a photopolymer. Okay, so we are going to be using tonight the Eastern Beauty stamp set and the Eastern Medallions 
framelits. Now these framelits are, there's a lot of them. So you can see how you get all these various pieces that mix and match and coordinate together to get you all kinds of, wait till, you sh wait till I show you what you can do with them. But these are just all the various pieces and you can see that some of them coordinate with our stamps. The stamps are a bit bigger than what they show on the case. But if you take them out, you can see that this framelit and this stamp actually go together. So you can cut them out and have perfect stamp images that are cut out. This has a lot of little fun, I, little fun stamps to go with it and you'll be amazed at what you can do with it. I am not even going to show you half of what you can do with it, but I did want to show you quickly on those framelits. So these are the framelits that you get. I don't know if you can see them all, but these are all the pieces and like some of them just cut out uh, like the petals, but not all the way through. Like this one too, they just so that you just have these little pieces that lift up and then you can see what's behind. And then we have the stamp, the framelits that go with the stamps. But you start putting these together and you get so many great ideas, it doesn't seem to end. So these are the outside framelit with a different inside. And then the flowery thing that just pokes out with the insides. And then Look at those. And those are three pieces in each. So you've got the outside framelit, a middle piece, and then an inside piece. And then these are all the various different flowers. And then these are all the various different pieces for this one. And then this was just some that I just totally cut out. And I just trimmed like the flower. I just trimmed in the spot. It was just that one little spot where it's connected and I trimmed those out. So you can see how many different um, ideas you can come up with with those framelits when you start mixing and matching them. Tons of ideas. I love that. This was a fun, this was a fun day. I got to make these <laughs> little charts and uh, I had a really, I have a lot of fun doing that. Okay, also in this suite is paper, designer series paper, and I'm just going to show you this side. Oh wait, I got one more piece here. I think, yeah, one more piece. So you can see this side, you get these five designs, and then you flip them over and you get five other designs. One of the things I like about these is you can keep them just the way they are, but then they also have stamps that coordinate that go right inside those little spots that you could stamp on these. Like inside here, they have stamps that coordinate inside there, and so you could do all different colors. Just It's just really kind of fun paper, and you don't realize how much fun it could be until you start playing with it. The other thing that comes with this paper is um, gold sheets. These are 12 by five, 12 by 12 sheets, so you get the gold and the um, gold with the dapper denim. So that's why it's a, it's a specialty paper, so it's got a little bit of it. So those are just one-sided. They don't have, they're just white on the other side. So I hope that makes sense. Actually, this kind of paper is what I put into my packets that went out this past, the last time we did a workshop. So just wanted to tell you that. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And I'm going to show you my first card here that we're going to make. And I'm going to also have on my website, I'm going to have instruction sheets that actually came from Stampin' Up! with all of the measurements and everything and all the instructions. And so I probably am not going to give measurements tonight because you're going to be able to visit my website when I'm done. Um, I will load them up there and so that you can um, get the measurements for those. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and start with this card first. And... I've got my pieces here. So I'm using a piece of the, now I'm not gonna know all the names because Fresh Fig is this cardstock. Dapper Denim is the blue piece. This is a piece of the designer series paper. This is actually cut four by five and a quarter. I like to do that cut a lot because it makes me get a lot of cardstock out of there. And then a piece of very vanilla cardstock goes with that. And, this one, I'm just going to go ahead and lay down and fold it. So I cut it in half and scored it. Let's do this over. I took a full sheet. I cut it at five and a half by eight and a half and scored it at four and a quarter and folded it in half. And that's my card size. I have to get some tape. See, this is one of the reasons I like to be at home because then when I've forgotten something, it's right here. I'm going to take this piece of designer series paper and I'm just going to add some adhesive to the back and then I'm going to lay this down so it, you'll see how it gets a nice frame around it. Easy peasy and then I'm going to take the stamp set and I'm going to use 
I sure didn't get much ready tonight. Oh, somebody had asked about the stamps and how to ink them up without getting them on the corners. Um, what I'm going to tell you is, we'll use a little bit of this fig. So the, the best advice I can give you is use the block that fits the stamp the best. Now, so this one could go on here like this too. But the bigger, if you have a big block, chances of you getting an inked up edge are a lot more because you have a lot more surface and when you're, when you're stamping it, inking it up. Just remember, it's just a tap, tap, tap on these, on these uh, firm foam pads. But if I had a big block, if I was trying to do this stamp on this big block, this, the chances of me just tipping a little bit is going to pick up ink on that edge. So what I would recommend, use a smaller block that coordinates better with the image that you're using. And then if you do get ink on the corners, just have, like this is great, the absorber is great for that because you can just run around and take it off. You'll be able to see it. Um, sometimes when I'm doing a workshop with a lot of people, and everybody's stamping, I will have people that will come in with a stamp like this and they'll just do this and then pretty soon, can you see that? Probably not. How much ink is on there. So that, that that's what happens and it's just because people press too hard or your, your block is too big. So I hope that answers your question. That seemed like a lot of words for, for a little bit of answer. <laughs> So I'm going to come in with some of our gold ribbon, and this ribbon is actually in um, the catalog that's current right now, and it's going to be in the next catalog too. And I'm just going to take this, and I'm actually going to tie a bow. So remember what I said about tying a bow? I like to take four lengths of um, whatever I'm tying the bow on. If I have four lengths, I'm going to get a nice size bow. If I have three, I'm going to get a nice knot. So it just depends on what you want. This one I'm going to go ahead and tie in a bow. Oh, you know what? I want to take one of these. I'm going to take one of our little uh, tassels and just add that onto my the start of my bow. Not easy tying a bow in front of everybody. There we go. Pull that down. And then what I like to do, what I like to do is once I've got it tied, then I can just go ahead and move that whole thing. Like I want it to be right under that. Right under the words. And Trim off my ribbon pieces. And then I've got this piece is going to go on here. And I guess I can go ahead and put that on because I'm just going to do it flat. So I'm going to bring on some adhesive and I'll go like I, you can see. And if I want that ribbon to stay right there, just put some adhesive where that ribbon is and that'll hold it on the back so it won't get away from you. But you can see how quickly this card goes together. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to close this up. We're going to do a little stamping. So I'm going to take one of my images, and I'm going to take that flower image, this one here, and this one here, and this one here. And I'm going to throw this in the box. Sorry. Let me pull it. Let me bring in my big shot. Oh, if you knew what the big mess I have going on up here. I have good intentions every time I'm going to do one of these workshops to spend a little time and clean up my stamp room. But... It's too big of a mess. So, can you see? Okay, I can't see. I'm gonna lay down the flower, and I'm actually gonna put it. I mean, I'm, I want it to be like almost right smack in the center of that, and then I'm gonna add in a ring, and then I'll add in the thir the third ring. And what I have been doing, because I have gobs and gobs and gobs of washi tape, so I'm just gonna grab one. I like the washi tape because it's it sticks, but not too much. So once I've got them where I want them, I'm just going to go ahead and washi tape them together. This is solves two problems. One, it's not going to move. Those rings are going to move on you, so you don't have to cut each one separately. And the other thing is, if I'm going to cut one of these flowers, and move it now because I don't really like where it's placed. But see, I can pick the whole thing up and move it. 
So if I'm making a ton of cards, I already have them all taped together. So I'm going to run this through the Big Shot. I'm going to go forward. And I'm using the steel plate. And then I'm going to run it back. I'm going to move this out of the way. And then, you can see what a great cut I got on the back of that. And then pull these off. And this is the hardest part because that, that flower is still attached to the cardstock. So I can either, I can do this and just pick it out. The other thing you can do is use the brush. But see how they'll stay together? Then I can just transfer this to the next card piece of cardstock and keep going. And it does have pieces inside there. They're going to be okay to cut a few more. Um, so don't worry about that. Just go ahead and keep cutting. I would cut like five and then get something to poke those out. And I sometimes just use a scissor just to go around and poke a few out. So once you've got that, then you're going to get your brush. Let me grab that. And just brush it on there. And those all pop out. Okay? So you can see how the piece is cut. And then these pieces, you're actually just going to flip up when you're... Um, once you've got it all put together. Okay, so what I did with this piece, once I've got it cut, then I'm gonna come in with some of my stamps. And you can see that this has lots of little itty bitsy stamps, this little tiny one here. I'm gonna use one of these. And you can see I just stuck it onto a rectangular block. And I'm gonna come in with the dapper denim. And then ink it up. And because it's photopolymer, I can see exactly where I'm stamping. Make sure that you guys can see it. It's probably hard to see it because I'm doing dapper denim on dapper denim. But I'm just going right between those puddles and just adding a little stamped image to the flowers. Can you see that? And then I should have had, I'm missing a piece of cardstock. One of the things that I did with this Sorry, I still got some of these little things to come out. Still a few in there. So I'm going to just, um, let me grab a piece of cardstock. And through the magic of television, let me just cut a piece real quickly. I just cut a piece of white to go right behind it so you can actually see it. Um, and then on my, this is going all to get to attach on here, but before I did that, you can see on my card here, I just attached it with some dimensionals. See the piece of cardstock behind it. I'm not going to do this because it's white and I want to make sure I do vanilla. But I also have some of the gold um, vinyl stickers that we have in this packet of products. And these are the gold vinyl stickers, they're gorgeous. Um, I put one behind the big flower so it kind of peeks through and then I just pulled my petals up and then added a little gold right there but super simple card. You saw how I put it together. And then I just used a couple of these in the, in the background of that of the gold thing. And then um, the other thing is is if you're using these on, on uh, window sheets, you can stick them to the window sheet and flip it over and then they turn silver. So just a little hint there. Okay, card number one is this one. I will finish this one later. Um, but you can see how simple it is. So I'm gonna run over and see if there's any questions. I kind of feel like I fumbled through that, sorry. Um, I hope I gave you a couple of answers. I'll see if I can catch up. Yeah, the absorber is like 27 by 17 inches. Um, somebody put over on YouTube, thank you. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's funny. Heather says she wasn't a fan of this set, but now she is, right? That's how it, that's how it works. <laughs> um, I liked the, I loved the end colors. So I was excited about that. Sorry, I'm trying to remember how to do this. 
<laughs> oh, I'm not screen sharing. That's why. Sorry. I got so many things going on that I have a hard time finding everything. Okay. So, um, yeah, this, the, and the colors are great. What do you see the next card? So the absorber is like a piece of chamois. Correct. That's exactly right, Julia. Um, Julie, it's just a chamois and it's, but it's called the absorber and it's great because it doesn't get little fibers on stuff. Okay. Lots of people here. The little tassels are adorable. Yes. Oh, somebody's lid on her fine tip glue is stuck. Any suggestions? Yes. What I would do is I would take your lid of your fine, uh, fine tip glue, undo the whole thing, and then soak the needle part and all the little pieces for the top into like just some warm, not hot water, but a little bit of warm water and soak it for a while. And then it should uh, it should clear up and you should be able to poke through again. I hope that helps. Sorry about that. Okay, I don't see any more questions there. Let me check and see if we have questions. Yeah, the dyes, I love these. If, if nothing else, the Eastern Palace dyes are fabulous. What a fun, it's just a fun way to really jazz up your cardstock. And it, they look great um, without any stamping or anything. But wait till the stamps are just awesome. Okay, yeah, it looks like people are mostly just telling me that they're over there and they're hearing me, which is good. The hardest part for me when people are over on my website is getting their questions. Um, it would be easier, I think it would be easier if... I had somebody monitoring that part, but we don't at this point, so. Um, cleaning. Oh, the other question that somebody asked me about the cleaning, not only that, was cleaning inks, like craft ink or metallic ink or chalk inks. With all of those inks, I just use my stamp and scrub and a little bit of spray mist on my rubber. I like that because it conditions the stamps. Stays on is a little bit stronger ink, and I try to clean it right away off my stamps, I don't use stays on on my photopolymers just because I don't. I don't think it's good for them. Um, I like to use the basic black ink of Stampin' Ups. But stays on is a little bit stronger. And they do have an actual cleaner just for stays on that you can use. But if you spray that and scrub it fairly quickly, you'll be good. Sorry, she's going a little crazy tonight. Um, let me go to my screens because I had... Okay, so this is the Eastern Palace Suite that I'm showing tonight. So there's two different bundles that are going to be available. Now, these are not bundled in the big catalog. They're only bundled in this catalog. So the nice thing about these two bundles is um, you get products. You get extra product. So they will be bundled in the other catalog with the framelits and the stamp set. Meow, I love my puppy. Um, and but tonight they're this month they're offering them but for a starter kit bundle which is what I used in that card I used the here's the paper and some inks and the stickers and the stamps and then you get note cards in the vanilla color that's new um, for free and then if you're gonna go with the premier bundle then you're then you're getting everything that's in this bundle and then you're adding in the framelits and the tassels and the cardstock and this time you get the very vanilla thick cardstock, eight, eight and a half by 11, and then uh, envelopes that coordinate with that. So it's a great deal and it's a lot of fun. Um, somebody asked, what is my favorite new color? My favorite new in color would be, oh, sorry. Interestingly enough, I didn't think that I was gonna like the lime color, but I do. Um, I like the darker purple, the fig. This color here, fresh fig, and I think lemon lime twist is a great color. It was it, it to me when I first saw it. I was like, "Ooh, I don't know. That's kind of weird," but it's a beautiful color, and they go so good with everything they have. So, um, anyway, this is the starter bundle, so you can see what you get. And then I think I have a picture of the premier bundle. It gets the starter bundle plus all this other stuff. So these little tassels, aren't they cute? Love them. There's the cover to the new catalog, which I can't show you anything but the cover 
That's all Stampin' Up! will let us do right now. But you, like I said, you guys should start getting them. If you don't have a catalog and you don't have a demonstrator, let me know. And I will um, get you on my mailing list to get one out when I get them ready to go. Questions! What the fires are to die for? I don't like this first, but the... Uh, yeah, the dyes are to die for. Yep, yeah. I cleaned my stamp in warm water, and after it dried, it shrunk. Any solution? Your stamp? Uh, I have no idea. I've never cleaned them in warm. I mean, oh, you clean? I cleaned my stamp pad in warm water, and after it dried, it shrunk. So, like your ink pad or your cleanup pad. If it's your ink pad, it's shrunk because there's no ink in it. And if you put ink in it, it'll expand out a little bit. Does that make sense? You're going to have to explain that one to me there, Pat. Yep. Lots of people love this set. Looks like you got lots of goodies from Stamp It Up. Yeah. Okay. So these boxes here are, um, I did get, yeah, they're catalogs and some new stuff. It's a mess. I know. It's a mess. Okay, I'm gonna go back over and we'll work on the next card. I don't see any more questions. Oh, I'm so happy that everything is switching over just like it's supposed to. My son had to come over today because everything fell apart. Okay, so I'm gonna move this card out of the way and we will work on the next card, which is this one. See, I make just use mess. I got stuff everywhere. So the next card that I'm going to do is this one. Oh, there's those little pieces of cardstock that I was looking for earlier. It's this one here. Again, it looks like it's really fancy and it was really hard to do. It's because of that die cut. Super easy. Okay, so we're coming in this time with, I actually, there we go. Okay. So we have this piece of cardstock, which the color is Tranquil Tide. This was an eight and a half by 11. I cut it in half at five and a half by eight and a half, scored it at four and a quarter, and I fold it, and that gives me my card size. Again, I'm using a piece of the uh, designer series paper that um, is four by five and a quarter, and I like to cut them at four by five and a quarter because I get a lot more pieces in there. One of the things that I wanted to show you, though, is that you can take some of these stamps and they'll fit inside these little spaces and you totally change up the look of your cardstock. I'm not going to do that right now because this, this doesn't show much. But even on the back here, you can see where you could put more stamping. But now we're going to cover that up. A little tranquil tide green right over the top of that cardstock. And then I'm going to take my piece of very vanilla. I don't want to lose my stamps. See these two pieces right here? They were supposed to go with the last card. Okay, so then I've got this piece here, and I'm going to use some stamps. I'm going to use this one. Oops. Find a block. So that's just a circle. Now, one of the things that I like to do, if you want to make sure that your circle gets actually on as a circle, because if you squish it too much, you'll make it an oval. So I just put it down on my piece of paper or down on my work surface. And then pick it up on my block. And then I know that it is the shape it's supposed to be. I'm going to come in with this lime color and ink up my stamp. And then just start stamping it randomly. I think I need one right there. Just to make a quick background. Really, that's super simple. And then I'm going to take this piece here. This this piece of, is the only piece I'm going to use. And I'm actually, oh, you know, I screwed up. We're going to have to do it over. I need to punch it out first. Because <laughs> you can see I didn't stamp in the middle of that. So there you go. First tip, look at your card closer so that you don't screw it up. Or just make a creative adjustment. Let me bring my piece of paper up here. And my platform, and my big shot. I'm gonna lay that where I want it, so I want it to be kind of close to that edge. Come in with my top piece, and we'll try this over. 
go for the ones here. Bring it back. Move that out of the way. Move this out of the way. Now, I have this piece of cardstock, and I can just go ahead and I'll just take my brush. There's a little foam pad that comes with it, but I left it sitting over the other side of the room, so I'm not going to worry about it this time out. And I'm going to just pull this off gently. There. I just have a few little stragglers. Okay, now I have that piece. Yay! And I'm going to take a stamp. And some of the tranquil ink. Oops, that's blue. Is that tranquil? Okay, that would not be the color I want. Here's the color I want. This would be a good time to bring in that absorber. So I'm just going to go ahead. You can see how quickly that picks up all the ink. And it is dry. I mean, it is clean. And there's no fuzzies. Ink up. Stamp my Let's Be Forever Friends. And then, again, I'm going to come in with just a little tiny piece. See how little this one is? I'm just going to ink those up, and then I'm going to, because I can see exactly where I'm stamping, I can hit right in between that little arch all the way around this medallion. Lots of those little stamps fit in there, and then you get that. Once I have that, then I'm going to come in with lemon lime. So cut it first so that you don't have lemon lime ink all inside the. So then, and then I'm going to come in and just randomly stamp this lemon lime on there. And this is going to get put on with dimensionals. So I'm going to put some on the inside of my medallion because I want it to be raised up inside there and then I'll put some on the corners. <laughs> Sorry. And then come back with my card and add it on to the front. And these are so not colors that I would use. But you see how it starts to go together. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with this piece. And before I do anything, I'm going to take the flower stamp. You can see I use that one a lot because it's, it's stained that color, but it's fine. I'm going to use Fresh Fig. This is one of my favorite colors of the New England colors. Fresh Fig. Stamp it on this piece of cardstock. Once I've done that, I'm going to show you a little trick here. And this is what I was talking about, why you don't want to... Um, Ding your framelit. So back in with my big shot. If I don't, if I lose, if I don't lose one of these stamps, I'll be amazed. Okay, and I'm going to use these two framelits here. This one's going to cut the whole thing out, and this one's going to make the little petals. So I'm going to lay this one down and get it exactly where I want it, and then come in with a little bit of that washi tape. Now for this one, I could use the magnetic plate, um, and it would work just fine. But that's on the other side of the room, and so I'm just going to use what I got here, and again, put it where I want it. Add a little washi tape. Now I, I could actually come in here and lay this where I want it. Oh, what the, yeah, it's 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 far enough away. So if I lay this one down, and then put this one down on the inside. And you can see it, how you want to line it up. You want to get it, you know, exactly where you want it. Tape it down. Run it through. You want to make sure that when you're doing that, your framelits don't end up on top of each other. Because it doesn't do much good for the framelits to get squashed by the big shot if it's not cutting through paper. So... So what I'm saying is if, if these edges got together and one was overlapped, it could cause some issues for your framelit. So I'm going to go ahead and take that one off and then remove my tape. 
and then remove the streamlets. You can hear it. Because this one doesn't cut out all the way. There we go. So then you see where you've got your cuts, and then these are petals. And so the petals will just pop up like that. And I'll move this out of the way. And I will bring my card back in. And I'll take a dimensional and stick the dimensional on the back of that and add my flower. And then just to give it a little bit of pizzazz, I want to see, do I have? Yeah, so these are the stickers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these. Oh, I have two sheets here. <laughs> you get two sheets of each in your pack. So you get a lot of stickers. I'm just going to take one and stick it in the middle of the flower. And then just for a little more pizzazz, I'm just going to take a couple more and stick them around on there. And then I'm going to add, grab the end of my ribbon. Do a little bow. So did you see that? Just take a piece of ribbon, make a loop, and then bring it around. Just like yours. Let's try it again. Make a loop, and then bring it around. And tie it. And what you've got is you've got a nice looking bow that is very flat, so it doesn't have any bolt to it. Once you've done that, um, I would probably take a, I'll just use a piece of this snail, but normally I would use a glue dot and add it to my card. Quick, quick, quick card. Let's see if it looks like the other one I made. Oh, I did a couple more flowers on this one. Okay, so on this one, that's what the extra card stock was for. You can see where I stamped and cut out a couple of extra little flower doodads, and it makes a difference. Just adds a little bit more pizzazz to it, so. Add some more stuff to it. Okay, coming back over to see if you have any questions. Yeah, it does look like fishnet. Somebody said, that looks like fishnet. Yes, it does. Okay, so I have to tell you, my husband is outside tonight. Um, going out our sprinkler system. Which is amazing, because it's pretty early in the year. And I will tell you, it was only, I think, last week when we had, I don't know, eight inches of snow or something. So, but today, the last few days, summer is here. You can tell I'm getting a little sunburned. Um, when cutting with, cutting your circle on the big shot, what did you use as your bottom plate? I used the, I used the um, platform and then the steel plate. I use the steel plate with all of my thinlets because they're so intricate, it cuts them out good. And then I run it through once and then break back it out. Um, yeah, the, the washi tape with the dye saves a lot of time. And honest to gosh, you know, a little bit of washi tape goes a long way and you end up with a whole bunch. Uh, uh, some people, Kathy DeHay, she likes the magnetic plate with them. And that works too. That's not a problem. I just prefer the steel plate with the, with the intricate, delicate dyes. Looks like you got lots of goodies from Stampin' Up. Yep, yep, yep. Yes, I did. Mostly we'll it's... Mostly it's catalogs. Okay, so, oh, questions over on. Why did you use a small rectangle block instead of the small square and the tiny stamps? Do you have better control? No, I just used the small rectangle block because it was sitting there on the, on the desk. If I would have had my small block, which I can't find, I would have used that. But it was just so happened to be sitting there on my desk. What is the name of the 3D flower you demonstrated in the last video? 3D flower. Oh, it was the um, the succulents. The succulent garden and the succulent framelit set. And it's still available. And it's on sale. And it's a screaming deal. Okay, so I think I got all those questions answered. Let me check. Let me check. Oh my god. Okay, let's see. Something didn't work for her. Shoot. 
Is the steel plate you use called the precision plate? Yes, it's called, thank you. It is called the precision plate. It would help if I used the right names of stuff. Okay. I saw a tip from someone that for your polymer stamp, or it might be any stamp, stamp in Versamark first and then stamp in color ink. You won't stain your stamps. Hmm. I have been told that that does work. So if you don't want your stamps to be stained, stamp them in Versamark first and then just the first time you use them. And then they're kind of like, that just helps make them work better. Seasoned, I guess you'd say. Yeah, somebody just got here and they'll watch from the beginning later. Lynn is here from California. And that person can see and hear me. Cool. I think we got it. So questions are any more questions? It's get close. So start asking now. Do you use your stamp and scrubber to clean off your stamps when using Versamark? Yeah. I use I use the stamp and scrub for pretty much everything. The Versamark is good because it does condition your stamps. Um, even yeah, just the Versamark alone. Okay. What is the first few sets that you use the most? <laughs> I have been stamping for 20 years. So my first stamp sets, I would just go through and find something that you really like. The nice thing about Stampin' Up! is that you, they come in sets, and so you get the things that coordinate together. They're going to look good together. I would recommend you get something with a couple of verses or phrases in it just to help you out with your stamping on your cards. Um, birthdays are always good. Uh, I find myself m making birthdays, thank yous, and sympathy cards the most these days. So, let's see. I think I have a couple more things to show, and then we will be done. We'll do a couple drawings and for some cards and stuff. Okay, let's see if I got... I don't think I'm going to stamp this whole card, but I'm going to show it to you. Again, I'm using um, this card here. Isn't it pretty? But see all the stamping in there? So you can see where that stamp is inside that little arch, and then there's a stamp out here. Those are just stamps that are in this little set. And so you just, any colors would be good. A little bit more of that gold ribbon, a tassel, which are available again, yay. And then I use designer series paper on the back. It's the same circle that I cut out this one for, but I'm, instead of just the circle, I actually used one of the inside circles to cut out and then stamped it on the inside. Enjoy today. That's just attached with some dimensionals. Super simple. Super simple. And then I added a little bit of the gold vinyl stickers to the back of that. So I'm going to have directions for these cards where I will have, it's actually laid out exactly what you need to do and all of your measurements. Let me grab this here. But to make these cards, of course, you're going to need the premier bundle. So you'll be able to print these out, but it has all the measurements down here of exactly what you need, all the different pieces of cardstock, and then the samples of the cards. And what else? This is the catalog. I can't show you the inside, but I can show you the cover. You can see this is mine because it has my name on it. And this is how I keep my inventory. So I have a catalog that I just take a highlighter or two, and I highlight whatever I have so that I don't order a double, so I don't double it up. Because I have been known to do that too. I'm looking to see if there's anything else. There's so much stuff around my room right now that it's just a disaster. But anyway, if you don't have a catalog, let me know, um, and I will make sure that you get one out. But, but if you have another, if you have a demonstrator, please order your catalog from them because they need your business too. <laughs> so I'm going to answer a few questions, and we will have a little uh oh we'll do a couple card giveaway so what the question is I'll, I'll give a card away on each site so youtube facebook and my website everybody will win one um so the question is just the first person that can type in the comment box one of the new in colors go um yeah, Lovely as a Tree is really popular still. I, I think it's funny. Yes, it's in the catalog. Um, it's one of their biggest selling stamp sets still, which is amazing because it's been around forever. If I didn't answer your question, please post it again so I don't miss it. If I didn't answer your question, 
I am going to be searching. Okay, Heather O on YouTube got Tranquil Tide. So Heather, you're going to need to send me um, a message at my email is diane at ddstamps.com and you can just send me a message and I will get uh, with your address so I know where to send it to. Oh, sorry, Carolyn. I do talk fast and I don't mean to, it just happens. So I will try to slow down. Okay. On Annie Jasper one on Facebook, Annie guest tranquil tide too. So Annie, I think I have your address. So I will make sure that that gets out to you. And on my website, the winner of a card is This might take some time because if everybody answered, I have to find the Judy, Judy Parker, you are the winner over on my website. Let me write that down so I don't forget. Each of you have won a, have won a card from me. So if you don't have any more questions, let's see if, what else I have on my screens here. Oh, I think there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Beautiful samples. This is one of my favorites called um, something eclectic. I love the paper. Okay. The last time I did one of these workshops, somebody didn't know what my virtual club was. And so I kind of wanted to explain it to people tonight. Um, it is a club that I have online. And if you join it, you get an, an online workshop. You get the step-by-step -step tutorials that I give you. I get a gift to you on your birthday month. Um, and you get free product after a six month commitment. So the commitment is $25 a month. And after six months, you get $25 in free product. And then you get all of the catalogs too. So if you're interested in my virtual club, visit my website, it's www.ddstamps.com. And you will see a link at the top that says virtual club. And if you are into stamping and on a budget, this is a great way to get some fun, great product. Um, at a, on a budget price, but still after six months get a great bonus of $25 in free products. So look into that if you're interested. My dye, my brush for my dye cleaner, I can't think of the technical name, keeps bending. You know what? Don't press so hard. I have found that if you just press lightly with the brush for the dye, it it works better than if you're pressing too hard. You just got it's it's just a real light touch. You stepped out. What was it? Was yours, Pat? Was yours the one that had the dry, it, your ink pad shrunk? I asked if it was an ink pad or if it was a, a cleaning pad. So if you could put that, clarify there. Okay, so this particular workshop, this is the hostess code that we're using this week. If you, if you use this hostess code, I am sending out um, fun goodie pack packages which I have ready to go actually. I have, I have, well, I have some of the boxes of stuff that's here is them. Um, you will get a packet of in color papers and designer series paper and embellishments and ribbons and fun stuff like that. So if you place an order this um, tonight before Monday, uh, you will get a packet of goodies. If your order is over $150, please do not put the hostess code in. Go ahead and take the hostess benefits for yourself. And then I will make sure that you still get a goodie basket. Um, another thing that people had asked me to do was to explain the frequent stampers program that I have. And when you place an order with me, you know you get a free, um, I send out a free tutorial each month. And in that email, there's a link in there to the frequent stampers program. But somebody wanted me to explain it to them. So I thought, I'm going to explain it to everybody. So the frequent stamper program is you earn free a free stamp set of your choice. And you, after you earn 10 coins by placing your orders through me online, then you get a free stamp set of your choice. So for instance, on this particular chart here, uh, on 1115, this person placed an order, there's the order number, of $152, and they earned three coins. And once they hit 10 coins in this column, so you get a coin for every $50 that you spend, not including tax and shipping, once you get to 10, then you get a free stamp set of your choice. That's for anybody. So just try to keep track of your orders. And if you haven't or you need some help with it, 
feel free to contact me because I can look up your orders. It's not that hard to do. And I would love to help you out with that. Okay, so we are to door prize drawing time, which means that if you have a question, now is the time to answer it or ask it. Um, and Pat, if it's an ink pad and you and it dried out, then once you add ink to it, it should it should puff up. I've never washed an ink pad and and dried it before. So if it but if it's an ink pad, add refill ink to it and it should it should come back, I would think. Okay, I'm checking questions. If I didn't answer, ask again. I'm still here. I'm going to be checking here shortly. Okay, so I think I answered them all. Uh, let's see. Oh, door prize drawing. Okay, so the door prize drawing, the slip looks like this. If you click down in the YouTube on YouTube, it's down in the description. There's a little link on my website. There's a link to the door prize drawing. And on Facebook, there's a button to press. Once you get to the door prize, fill it out. It all gets populated into a chart or a spreadsheet that I'm looking at. And I've actually picked a number already for the winner. It's going to be number 75 is the winner. So whoever's name lands on 75. Sorry. That will be the person that wins the door prize. And I think you're going to like the door prize because you're going to get a choice tonight. The winner. Oh, yep. Looks like uh, looks like people are starting to fill it in. So, yeah, get your door prize done. And it looks like our winner is Betty Jo Nelson. Betty Jo, you get to choose between stamp sets. So I have three stamp sets that are available tonight that you get to choose one of them that you want. One of them is every occasion. It's a cute little solid, solid, uh, clear or uh, red rubber clear stamp. I've got the photopolymer stamp, Thankful Life. This is one of the Hostess sets, and I know this looks really strange, but these all layer. So if you do them in three different color inks, they layer on top of each other. They're photopolymer, so it's pretty easy to do. So you can, it, what it is, it's is a vase with a big thing of flowers. It's pretty. And then this one is the pun intended set. Um, that you might be interested in. So any one of those three is yours. Betty Jo Nelson is the winner. The other thing I wanted to let you know that anybody that places an order in, in the next few days using that hostess code, I put everybody's name into a basket um, on Monday when I draw, and I draw a name out of there, and that person gets to earn a free stamp, a free hostess set. So it's just a little bonus that I give with, um, Okay, Pat, the stamp cleaner pad, the one that has a dry side and a wet side. Oh, 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 okay, I get it, okay. It shrunk, did you, oh, I don't know why it shrunk. That's weird. I would contact Stampin' Up, because I can't imagine that, I mean, I've had it where it curls up a little bit, but I can usually flatten it and get it back in the, in the stamp thing. Like I said, I've had my stamp cleaner for years. Uh, my email address is diane at ddstamps, Diane at ddstamps.com. You can also catch me on Facebook. Um, I'm just quick going to check. <laughs> Pun intended. Okay. That's the one she wants. Betty Jo Nelson's going to get pun intended, so I will get that out to you, Betty, as soon as you send me your email address or your, um, your address. So send that to me on a Facebook message. As long as you're on Facebook, that'd be easy. Cool. I think I got everybody's questions answered. Yay! Let me check one more. If you have no more questions, I guess we're done. Hey, we did it in an hour. That's pretty good. I'm going to be happy with that. Perfect. Watch for your catalog. If you don't have one, let me know, and I will get one out to you. But if you have another demonstrator, please feel free to contact them. Um, if you've placed an order with me over the last year, one is on its way to you shortly. So I hope everybody has a good night. And if you had any more questions, let me know. Julie, it was great to talk, to, to, to show you some new stuff. 
Um, yeah, I'll be showing up. I'll be showing the hall. I got to get, I got to deal with that stuff on that table. That has got to get out of here. It's been sitting in there for a couple days now. And I need a clear spot for me to stay up there. So if nobody else has any questions, we're going to say good night. Thank you. And I hope you have a good weekend. Happy Mother's Day. Bye.